Hey everybody, Steve with Flowchecker here. In this video, I'm gonna take you from this rather unhelpful looking home screen when you first log on to Thinkorswim to something that looks more like this, which I think is a more helpful environment for trading. And even if you've been on Thinkorswim before, you can follow along to see how we take advantage of some of the different features. But first, if you wanna learn a bit more about stock float, head on over to our site. We can also search up the float of your favorite stocks. Um, so here you are at the home screen. If you ever need to come back here for any reason, towards up towards the top right hand side, there's a, a tab for home screen, but we're gonna scroll along this menu to the left and we're gonna find under trade, we're gonna go to active trader. Now this immediately, immediately looks better. You see uh, some charts, you see some buttons for buying and selling. But we're going to improve upon this a bit. Uh, what I want to do is maximize my screen space. So I'm going to head over to the left hand side. You see this is called the, the gadget toolbar area. It's got watch list and some other items. We can collapse that if you click on the edge of that gadget area. You'll see you can always bring it back. You click on the edge, it comes back and forth. But I'm going to get rid of that for now. I'll come back to it. So now you see we're starting to make our chart a little larger. Now, I want to add a few more items. I'm going to scroll over down over to the right, top right hand side. You see this icon that looks like windows. I think they call them cells. You click there, you see there's a number of different cells you can experiment with. But I'm going to go ahead and add or just choose one cell. So now we're down to one chart on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have this active trader area. Before I talk about those, I'm going to add a few items of information, a few more. All the way along the right hand side, there's this vertical ribbon. I'm going to, towards the top, I'm going to click on time and sales. So this gives us the, sort of a running record of the transactions during the day, of the price size and volume, sorry, of, of the volume and price. I'm going to right now, Let's head back over to the other side. We're looking at the E-mini 500 futures. Let's type in something I think is more in play today. So we'll head back over to the ribbon. We've got time and sales. We're going to scroll down the ribbon. We'll go ahead and we'll add level two as well as news. So right here we have five windows of information to help us with trading. I'm going to customize this a bit more because I want to make my chart more visible. I'm going to bring down the news and the time and sales. I mean, and level two, excuse me. My time and sales, I don't need that much area. So I'm going to slide that to the right. And I will do the same with the active trader area. Sliding that over. Now the active trader area actually has a lot of information compressed into one spot. Here you see the price, you see the bid sizes on the left, as well as ask. So if, if you've ever been confused by spread, you can get an idea here is a very tight spread. We've, we've got the bids at 222 at the moment and ask at the current price of 223. In fact, we got buy and sell buttons here. And if you've ever been confused by stop or limit orders, you can just scroll up and down the trading ladder. This is called, and you can see the difference. We can do a limit order when it's below. We can do a limit order at 217. First, I'm going to expose this additional line of information which allows us to change the quantity of the shares that we want to purchase. So if I want to, I could manually enter it here, or I can use these buttons. Now, I want to place a limit order down to 217. I can just click in the trader ladder, a confirmation screen will come up, and I can hit send or delete. If I want to to automatically send that, I click on this auto send feature. And when I do the same, when I do a limit order at 217, 
my working order is immediately placed and you can see it in the ladder as well as on the chart. I can go ahead and cancel that. If I want to buy 10 shares immediately, I could just scroll over to market and you could see in the ladder where that would be located. I've got auto send clicked off. I'll go ahead and buy market and I'm filled. This area here will show our profit and loss throughout the day. And I will go ahead and sell that for a 19 cent loss. Okay, and the orders, the fill is reflected up in the top left corner. Now in the chart area, the default chart, you'll see that the candlesticks, at least on the up candlesticks in green are hollow. And the volume here is in blue. I want to change that appearance. I'm going to go to this gear icon. And then I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to look in my tick area and I want to fill up the candles and I want the color to be reflected the same as the symbol ticks. When I hit apply, you'll see that reflected in the chart to the left. I'm going to hit OK. Now getting back to the gadget area, I'm going to reopen that gadget area. So here are the watch lists. I want to take advantage of the watch list here that comes. There's a lot of preset watch lists. I'm going to click on this default button and I'm going to go to public and look for percent change gainers. I want to see what stocks are moving during the day. Now, I don't want to keep this toolbar area open though. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to detach the gadget and then I'm going to pin it to the top so that it doesn't disappear once I start working in the active trade of area. So now it's pinned. I can collapse the gadget area. I've got my watch list. Last thing I have to make sure is that my watch list is linked up with the rest of my screen. So I want to make sure that these link colors, symbol links, are the same. So this is yellow. I'm going to keep it yellow. And over here, top left, I can change the symbol link. Oh, move this down. Symbol link to yellow. So now, when I move, It's reflected on all these windows. Finally, the last piece of information I want to show you is under setup. If you look at my time and sales and quotes, it looks like they're coming through rather slowly. I want to go ahead and speed that up. I'm going to go to application settings. Top right corner. And then I'm going to scroll down to system. And you'll see my quote speed is on a delay of three seconds. I want no delay. I want real-time data. Real-time, I press apply settings. Now you should start seeing it come much, much faster as it's printing on the time and sales. This may, you may notice that this causes your computer fan to run more often. I think this requires more resources from your computer. So just be aware of that. I've noticed that my fan runs more often when this is in real time. And finally, if we wanted to change these quantity buttons, we'll go back to that setup, top right hand side, the gear icon. We'll go to application settings, order defaults, and we will change the default quantity of orders. Say we want quantity numbers reflecting 100. Apply settings, and you'll see these buttons. It's all a matter of personal preference. And the last item I'll show you is we can go ahead and we can save this workspace. We'll go ahead and save it as May 2021. Press save. So now, if you ever wanted to make any changes, if you wanted to go back to the default, go back to the screen that we started with, and you could have any number of settings, the layouts that you saved. 
and we can click on it and bring it back up and you're ready to go.